welcome to the, those who have made it a long live for this uh, self-acceptance webinar. And I'm going to give you as much as I can in the next uh, hour or so uh, that will help you on your personal journey to self-acceptance. And those of you who know me, um, some of you may be surprised to see me with glasses. So in order to be able to read this tiny little chat, I need to have them on for the webinars. So uh, if you haven't seen me in glasses, it's because I don't need them in the workshops, but I certainly do need them in the webinars in order to be able to read this little writing. So welcome, everyone. If you can just say uh, who you are and where you're from, those that are willing to do that, that's great. I know. Um, We've got people from several countries that I recognise here. Um, wow, actually some of you in the middle of the night and some of you, it's yesterday for you. So um, still uh, still yesterday in the US, Elaine, yeah, Colorado, Joy, yes, Vancouver, beautiful place. I remember it so well. Washington State, not too far away from each other, really, just on the other side of the border. Um, Megan, yeah, Perth, hey. Welcome along the locals. It's clearing up here. I was a bit worried about the weather. So um, hopefully it will all stay at bay and we'll be able to uh, keep the connection happening. So Adelaide, Brisbane, more California, Andy, yeah, welcome again. Uh, some of you have participated with me in the Go For It online program. So this, uh, this webinar is about self-acceptance and um, uh, let's get right to it and get through the formalities. Just have to put up the disclaimer, as we all do these days, just to make sure that you know this is for educational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Whilst the techniques that I'm going to be referring to in this program and maybe using if we have a chance, uh, SET, Simple Energy Techniques, IEP, my new intention-based energy process, and PET, provocative energy techniques, while those approaches have caused impressive results for lots of people, there's no guarantee they're going to achieve your goals or be as painless as they have been and are for others. You must agree to take full responsibility for your own physical and mental health and consult your physician and or therapist regarding your use of these techniques, particularly if you have a mental health issue. A reminder, the call is being recorded. And by participating, you give permission to being recorded. I might take live questions via chat or microphone. I certainly will by chat, uh, which uh, you'll see down in the left-hand corner of your screen. You can type in your questions for me uh, as we go, and I will try and answer as many of them as I can in the time that we have. Um, I already find myself speaking fast because I know how short an hour is. Um, if you do want to speak with me, and I do have an opportunity for that, you have to use a headset because if you don't use a headset or headphones, there will definitely be a nasty echo. Um, all right, so uh, now I have mentioned in uh, the promotional material, yes, I am going to make an offer at the end of this program, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to give you value. I really hate programs that don't uh, provide value. Um, hate's probably a strong word, really. Um, they irk me, shall I say. Um, I, I'm going to give you as much as I can in the time that we have. So for the next 55 minutes or so, we totally content as much as possible. At the end of that time, I'm going to make an offer for those of you <coughs> who want to hang around for that. That's great. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, just uh, this is all free as much as I can do in the time that we have. So let's have a look at this issue of self-acceptance. And um, these are the aims, really of doing this process is to free yourself from a prison that seems to be universal across the world. Uh, certainly in all the countries that I have presented in um, and, and visited, uh, people are suffering from self-judgment, self-criticism, uh, fear, inertia, which is you know holding back on moving forward, which a lot of people translate as self-sabotage, procrastination, all of those things often have their roots in this lack of self-acceptance. And that seems a little strange because, um, you know, we, we, we think we're going to motivate ourselves by beating ourselves up, but actually we beat ourselves down further and it just continues the negative process. So my aim is to free yourself from that, uh, that negative process and help you to, to find that not all the parts that you think are bad are really so bad. Sometimes they're trying to protect you. Sometimes they're actually trying to get you to pay attention to what's really important. Um, and ultimately, when you start to accept those parts of yourself, not only do you start to free up energy and access your own power and experience more joy and peace in your life, you also are more peaceful 
towards other people who have those characteristics that you tend to disown in yourself. Um, David Lake says one of the key ways to find out your unconscious blocks is to think about the things that irritate you about other people because that represents disowned parts of yourself and you've disowned those parts for a reason. There's a reason why certain things from other people irk you more than they irk other people, for example. Um, all right, I kind of found that there's a universal negative belief. Um, you know, it's kind of an underlying negative belief that that everybody on the planet seems to share and on some level that we believe that we're not enough. Now, there's variations on this, and the, the most common variation is I'm not good enough. Um, but it may also be I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not handsome enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not confident enough, whatever, I'm not enough. And, um, you know, that belief, if, if any belief has been destructive, it would have to be that one of not being enough. And, uh, you know, where does that actually come from? Um, where does where do we uh, where do we come from with this? You know, where, where does that start? Um, actually, let me go back. <laughs> I'm, I want to make this interactive. I, I, I hate just talking all the time. So I'm curious. What do you? You're, you're on here because you're participating in a self acceptance webinar. So what is it if for you personally that you don't accept about yourself? What is it about you that you? don't like so much. What's your personal negative uh, non-self-acceptance belief? Just put that in the chat for me if you wouldn't mind. Um, just type it down in the left-hand corner and we can start to connect and get a bit of group stuff going because one of the great things about these webinars is that we do get to create a, um, a sense of, of a group of people coming together and it's really interesting especially when uh, people start popping up at uh, at various webinars is that they start to connect with each other as well. So yeah, thanks Christopher, not confident enough. Um, Megan, today, yeah, it's like today. Today, the reason, the thing I'm going to be upset at myself for is um, I'm digressing from doing the work on my list or that is urgent. <laughs> I like that, Melissa, where do I start? Um, Fosia, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't accomplished enough in my life. Um, uh, I can't remember things clearly enough, Janet. Um, no matter how much I do, it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. These are, man, these are so universal themes. And I'm sure that if you are reading the chat now, you'll see some of those things that you have experienced yourself. Either you're still experiencing them or you have experienced them or you're going to experience them because that my um, mentor, Frank Farrelly, says what's most personal is most universal. Um, and I'm not enough, not good enough. Um, Rene, I really only care about myself. I don't care enough about others. Yeah, so this, this sounds like a kind of parental injunction. You know, you should be more caring about others. And that's how it comes across in, inside us. Um, Rilla, I procrastinate too much, um, too much too late. Um, it'd be nice in a way if you, yeah, you mean get too much done too late or I get started too late. Um, Andy, I'm not qualified enough, I'm too far behind. Yeah, these are generally also one of the things about them is they are comparison. We are comparing ourselves to others or to some kind of ideal. Um, and these are the, the kind of things that we don't, that I've found uh, general themes that we don't accept ourselves for. You know, we don't accept ourselves whenever we have a problem. In fact, one of the things about using tapping as um, you know, I've been using tapping for uh, uh, for 18, 19 years now, and with together with Dr. David Lake, those of you who know me, we've developed our own approaches, which is the SET and the PET, and I've now developed this IEP process. We've got acronyms coming out of the wazoo. You know, we're going to have to come up with one global name for this at some point. Um, anyway. What we find is that we start applying the process to people's problems and sometimes we can't get relief on the problem because there's another problem that's been dumped on top of it, which is that I'm so upset at myself because of the fact that I have this problem. I blame myself for having this problem. You know, I'm a bad 
person for having this problem. And so that's something that you need to start working on first. Um, I don't do things I should do and I, don't, I do things that I shouldn't do. Man, that's been around for since, <laughs> you know, Noah was on the ark. Was he on the ark? Um, anyway, um, yeah, I remember Paul, uh, you know, in the Bible he says, why is it that I do what I shouldn't do and I don't do what I should do? So he's wrestling with this over 2,000 years ago. So this has been around for donkey's years. Um, I think thoughts that are bad are evil, and that makes me a bad and evil person, whereas universally across the planet, we think negatively. We have evolved to think negatively, to think about bad things that might happen and so on. And th the theory of this is that we've evolved that because we, um, so that we can work out ways around it. But a lot of clients that I've worked with and a lot of people who've come to our workshops, they go to the bad place and then they live there as if that's real. And one of the things that um, you know people are finding with uh, uh, mindfulness approaches and approaches like acceptance and commitment therapy and so on, and you know research on uh, uh, you know what you do with your thoughts is actually allowing your thoughts without trying to oppose them and not having to believe them just because they're there, they settle down and go away. Um, I'm not, I don't accept myself because I haven't achieved the success I should have. Some of you have mentioned that kind of thing. Um, my performance at some important life task was below some perfect standard of what it should be. I remember Tony Robbins years ago talking about some guy that he worked with who was really upset because he only had a few million dollars and he should have had tens of millions of dollars. So he's, he's like, you know, I'm not good enough because I only have a few million and I should have tens of millions. Um, you're doing the same thing, you're just doing it on a different level. Um, and I don't accept myself because I don't know what I want or I don't know the best way to proceed. And, you know, if I were better or smarter or more clever or whatever, um, then I'd just be doing it and going there and, you know, everything would be wonderful. All right, so what, what we do with this is we try to be positive. You know, we try to fix our self-acceptance problem by deciding I'm going to be nice to myself, you know, I'm going to be more positive, I'm going to build myself up. And the problem is that doesn't work because a lot of our blocks are unconscious and a lot of this judgment process is unconscious too. It's a process which has been hotwired, I, I like to say hotwired into our nervous system where it's kind of been, um, yeah, you know, we've been electrically cooked um, by past experiences which have led to programming and has become part of our beliefs and some of those beliefs are unconscious. And so sometimes we need other people to help us to bring up our beliefs into consciousness so that we can work on them and we can do something about them. So let's have a look at um, uh, this process. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's, let's get you to start tapping because one of the things that we've found, and I know that there's going to be some people new to tapping, but most of the people here will already know the tapping. Um, uh, the simple process that we use is just tapping on the points and doing that either in a focused way by focusing on problems that you want to treat or just by tapping which progressively brings down your overactive reactive you know settles down your primitive alarm system and so on and brings down your anxiety and stress and brings up your confidence and positive life energy and allows you to see other perspectives and other sides to things um, so right now whether or not you are focused on an issue whether or not you are feeling judgmental of yourself at the moment, those problems are in the background and just because we're talking about them, this is an opportunity to get some tapping into them. So I'm going to suggest that you just start tapping now and as you know in our process you can tap on any points in any order. For anyone who doesn't know tapping, as my wife said, you shouldn't just start tapping before you explain it to people. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just so used to doing it all along. Um, with me if you want to, if you haven't done this before, start tapping at the start of your eyebrow and just trust me that it's going to be good for you and uh, it will start to help you to relax more because we know the tapping releases endorphins and it suppresses the stress chemicals. Um, so the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, under the lip, under the collarbone, under the arm and then on the side of the thumb side of the index finger, side of the middle finger, 
side of the ring finger we use in SET, side of the little finger, and then on the bottom of the hand, and then on the karate, oh, excuse me, karate chop point on the bottom of the hand, and then on the um, on the wrist, and then on the outside of the wrist. Now, um, for anyone who knows us, you know that we have a simple way of tapping, which is to use the thumb, um, just to tap down on the side of each finger. And you can do this with your hands under the table. It's unobtrusive if you're in a public place. And it's a non-fatiguing way of getting a lot of subtle tapping into your system. And since the points are all connected, if you now do that for the rest of the time, obviously if you're in your home and you're not in public, then you can tap on the upper body points and it won't matter. If you're somewhere public and you're listening to this, <laughs> I have people listening in, in workstations and all kinds of things, um, then feel free to just do this, this subtle tapping. And if you do that the whole time, then you're going to get benefits the whole time. So tap along when I'm talking, tap along when I'm working with other people and you will borrow benefits from that because we are all connected and the issues that other people bring up will connect in with your issues. Um, and even if they don't, you're going to get the benefits of getting energy toning, we call it, um, where you tap even when you're not focusing directly on issues and it tunes and tones your energy system and allows you to get into a, a different space. I already feel that I'm not so racy as I was when I started that. I hope you can sense the difference in my energy now when I'm talking. I feel like I don't need to race anymore. Um, we, we, we have time, we have plenty of time and we'll do what we can in the time that we have. Um, and then please take this away after the session and you'll gain more benefits by tapping on specific aspects that this brings up for you. Um, you can certainly tap for first aid when you're triggered and upset and, and then tap daily for, for energy toning. What we've found with our approach, and when I say we, I mean myself and Dr. David Lake, we've found that if you, um, if you tap every day, then some of your problems get better without you having to directly focus on them. And one of the ways of doing that, particularly related to this self-acceptance issue, is what we call acceptance tapping. And so acceptance tapping is really a process of adding the tapping or just grafting the tapping process to any problem pattern or behavior or to the feeling reactions that you're having around that problem. And what you're doing with this is that you're just tapping and you are not um, forcing or pushing or trying to make something go away or make something happen. You're tapping and you're accepting where you are and you're just adding tapping to it. You can associate, you can let your mind wander freely around the issues. Um, you can focus in on the body feelings or the thoughts and memories that you're having, but you don't try and make something happen. You just add the tapping to them. And even if you have the thought, I hate this situation or I hate this about myself, then you just add the tapping to that. You don't, you don't um, then go, okay, I hate this about myself. I have to tap in. I'm a wonderful person or I have to tap out this hating of myself or whatever it is. You just simply add the tapping to it. So, uh, for example, um, you know, if I have the thought like I had at the start, oh my gosh, we're never going to get through everything that we need to get through today, um, I can just tap and I can just notice that thought and I can put my attention on the thought, we're not going to get through everything. And as I do that, I notice in my body that my um, breathing starts to open up a little bit more. Obviously, it's not a big issue, that, that, that one, but it certainly is something that's obviously caused a little bit of stress in my system. And so as I do that, I start to notice that my chest opens up a little bit. And so now I'm going to scan through there. I'm going to notice if there's any more tension. And yeah, there's a little bit of tension a little bit lower down. So I'm just going to add the tapping. And I'm just going to accept whatever's there, and I'm just going to add the tapping to it. Now, of course, with our bad problems, we don't accept that they're there and we don't accept ourselves for having them. So when you're using acceptance tapping, you add the tapping to that. You add the tapping to the fact that you don't accept that. And uh, this is similar. I know I've stopped my process here to, to kind of explain it to you. I want you to be able to go away and use this process for yourself. Um, 
the classic example of this is Dave Lake who used this with a lady who had severe OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And that's not something that normally that you will expect to get good results with with tapping. It's certainly in the short term if it's really severe. And this lady had been hospitalised several times with her major anxiety and her obsessions and so on. She used to take two hours to leave the house. And all David did was had her take the tapping and do the tapping, the simple fingertip tapping, while she was going through the process of checking the house before she would leave it, um, which is adding the tapping into where the problem was occurring. And he wasn't getting her to try and change anything. He wasn't getting her to try and oppose anything. He wasn't trying to get her to try and force the anxiety to go away. He was simply accepting that she was... Um, that she was going through these rituals. If instead he tr tried to get her to change her rituals or, or you know, okay, we're going to force ourselves to leave now, then up would have come all the, the challenging stuff. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't apply tapping in that way, but what it does is it creates a big resistance, whereas this way subtly works away on the, on the process and rather than having to reject or oppose or push against, we're just adding tapping to the process and we're allowing it to get things to move and to, f and to create freedom. And so within uh, next time he saw her, she'd halved her, uh, the time that it took her to leave the house. Just by adding tapping, just by accepting the problem, by um, adding tapping to that without trying to change it, it had changed by itself. And progressively over the next few sessions, she got it down to 10 or 15 minutes. Um, she was able to get off medication, she was able to have a baby, she had a baby that had sleep apnea, which is a major anxiety provoking thing where the baby stops breathing, uh, can you imagine? Um, and she did just added tapping, sometimes apparently she was tapping all day and sometimes she was, uh, you know, she was stuck in bed tapping but she didn't have to go to the hospital and uh, she was able to get on and, uh, you know, help that, that baby and you know as far as we all know she's got a lovely little um, well kid would be at school by now I would say um, all right so let's talk a little bit more about what you can do with with tapping and with acceptance um, the paradox is we think that in order to change we have to not accept <clears throat> and I, I I don't want to say that um, you know, I know self-disgust and self-anger can be productive, but more often it's depressing and it depletes your energy and it stops you from being able to move. And um, one of the reasons is because nobody wants to start from where they are, they want to start from where they should be. So we don't want to accept where we are because where we are is not where we should be. And yet, in order for you to go anywhere, you have to be willing to start from where you are. And so um, Carl Rogers, who's the creator of client-centered therapy, a very famous therapist, he said it's a curious paradox that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. Um, and it's, it is a paradox because it seems ridiculous. We think if I accept myself, then I'm going to give in. Um, you know, we, we think that, that uh, you know, it means that, uh, you know, I won't do what I need to do in order to change things, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, acceptance actually is a process of growth through change and allowing all sides of an issue. Um, in fact, let me show you this. This is actually, I'm, I've jumped to the wrong slide here. What I want to show you is what acceptance is not first. And this is something that Dave Lake put together because people assume that acceptance means that you approve of the problem and it's it doesn't it doesn't mean that you agree with the problem it doesn't mean that you give up on solving it it doesn't mean that you're choosing good or bad and it doesn't mean denying or avoiding the problem acceptance is the starting point for all change and and lack of acceptance or not acceptance could really be um, the cause of stagnation um, denial, refusal, uh, and suffering ultimately, because when we're suffering, as Byron Cody says, we're believing something which is not real. We're believing something which is the opposite of, of what's real. In other words, I should be there, 
but I'm here. And um, I remember Milton Erickson had a classic, um, a classic example of a patient who was uh, who was in the um, in a mental institution, been hospitalised, uh, and uh, he kept saying, "I shouldn't be here." And so Erickson actually got the the staff to every time he said that to to say, "But you are here." And then he say, "But I shouldn't be here." And then they say, "But we, but you are here." Anyway, because <laughs> he was so relentless with constantly saying, "I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here." And then eventually, after everyone was constantly responding, "But you are here," finally he says, "Okay, I'm here." And then Erickson says, "Great. Now that you're here, let's see what we can do about getting you out of here." Because until you accept where you are, until you're ready to be where you are, you can't go from there to where you need to be. You can go anywhere you want, but you've got to be willing to start from where you are. And we don't want to start from where we are, we want to start from where we should be. Now, little question here, are you still tapping? Because even if I'm not addressing stuff that you expected from this, or even if I am, or even if you have you know issues that are being provoked, if you're tapping, it's going to get into that. So that's what acceptance is not. What is acceptance is? <laughs> it's a process. It's allowing both sides of an issue to be real. The strange, strange thing about humans is that we can believe two opposite things at one time. We can believe that we're a good person and a bad person, and then we have those parts fighting inside of us, and it depends what side of the bed we get out of, whether we are a good person today or whether we're a bad person today. And um, the reality is that we have, uh, we have both of those things. And if you rise above all of that, you don't have to evaluate yourself on a continuum of good or bad. So acceptance actually helps movement, and it stops you from being stuck, and it, and it helps you to rise above this struggle of having to vote. You're either good or bad. There's been plenty of people recently that that uh, you know celebrities have come into the spotlight for bad things that they've that they've done, and now of course we are going to call them bad people. Now I, I don't endorse anything that they've done. I think some, you know, I'm not thinking of anybody in particular at the moment, but I know that, you know, there's been a few people that have come to light and now we want to go, okay, they're bad, evil, and they need to be punished. And um, of course, that's because we've grown up in a world where there's, you know, we've learned that there are bad and evil people. So now they're on the side of bad. Um, whereas a minute ago, we thought they were on the side of good. Now they're not. Well, the things that they did that were good were still good, and the things that they did that were bad were still bad in terms of consequences and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the struggle is that in ourselves, we want to vote too. We want to be all good or all bad. We can't be a person who's both, and that would be horrible. And you know, one of the reasons why we want to want to get those bad people is because we want to make them different to us. When if we really accept everything, then we accept that we could be that person, that in their circumstances that could have happened to us. Um, Frank Farrelly used to say, you know, there's a common saying, um, there but the grace of God go I. He said, no, really, there go I. An aspect of me is represented in every other person on the planet. And yeah, you might not do the exact things that they do, but you have a part, for example, a part that gets angry, a part that gets rageful, a part that gets vengeful. Um, you may strongly disown those, um, but you certainly have them because it's part of the human condition. Um, so acceptance helps us to rise above all of this. Now, as many of you know, I've um, done a, actually, let me, there's another, <laughs> I'm rushing ahead. I'll start tapping to slow things down a little bit. Um, Acceptance is learning through mistakes as well as mastery. It's not just one or the other. It's redefining your connection to a person despite an issue. Uh, because often when we have acceptance issues, we're not accepting other people, which means we're also not accepting that about ourselves. And acceptance is a state of being. And also, it coexists with and welcomes love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness of yourself starts before love and forgiveness of other people. Right, so a few years ago, some of you know that I was—I uh, had this um, 
30 day self acceptance process that I did and I, I want to recommend it to everybody. Um, I was down on myself for wasting time. I was playing games on the computer late into the evening when I should be doing my work. Um, and so at the time I was using EFT. And in EFT, you use the tapping as most of you will know, and you have the setup statement that says, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely reject. Uh, <laughs> Now there's a there's a uh, Freudian slip. I deeply and completely reject myself is what we do when we're supposed to be saying I deeply and completely accept myself. Well, this was I do not completely accept myself at all. I reject myself because of I have the, the fact that I have this problem. And as I was staring at those words on the screen, I realised that I didn't accept myself because of the fact that I was playing games on the computer, getting sore neck and sore back for, because of doing this for many hours, you know, um, getting down on myself and so on uh, about it. What I did was I rejected myself because of this behavior. And then I suddenly had an insight. That rejection itself was the problem, not the thing that I was targeting. The rejection itself was the problem. Now, it's not that that thing out there wasn't still a problem. It's the fact that I had another problem, which was bigger than that problem, which was that I deeply rejected myself because of these behaviors. So I decided, OK, now I'm going to tap on that as the problem. And I'm going to tap on accepting myself no matter what I'm doing. And of course, massive resistance came up to this. I can't accept myself for doing this. I deeply reject myself for doing this. So then I, I started kind of playing games with this. So I, I was like, OK, now I'm going to accept myself even though I don't accept myself for doing this. I'm going to accept that. You know, there's a classic line in um, Eckhart Tolle's book. If you've ever read um, you know, The Power of Now, he has another book called Stillness Speaks. And it's a collection of uh, really interesting little um, sayings and snippets and so on. Anyway, um, one of those is the kind of um, the, I don't know, the person comes to him asking, OK, you know, I don't accept myself. And he says, OK, we'll start with that. Now, I don't accept this about myself or I don't accept this. He says, we'll, we'll start by accepting that. He says, what? I'm irritated about this. He said, we'll accept that. He said, what? Accept that I'm irritated about that? Yes, bring acceptance to that. And then you can get the next level of acceptance. So I realized in doing this that um, my non-acceptance of myself was the problem, that it was a bigger problem, that I, was, uh, I had these problems, but I was making myself the problem. So I started targeting that as a thing that I'm going to use in the tapping. Anyway, as um, some of you will know, uh, the next thought I had was, right, OK, I'm going to do this for 30 days. I'm going to set myself a trial of tapping for 30 days on no matter what I do, I'm going to accept myself for it. And the first thought I had was, you won't do this. You won't last. So then I did the tapping on that. And surprise, surprise, the next morning when I woke up, I did do it. I felt like doing it. And uh, a few days later, I was just, you know, I just went to bed a little bit early and I was doing this tapping on this acceptance, I was taking it to the ridiculous extreme. You know, I don't accept myself for, for not accepting myself because of this. Um, you know, I'm going to accept myself even though I don't accept myself for not accepting myself for, for this. And uh, at some point, that completely blew out. And I was filled with this beautiful warmth. And I had this incredible realization that all of my problems were problems, but I was not the problem. That I could have problems, and I could have problems that I had to deal with, but it wasn't me. See, before this, everything that I did was wrong. It was me that was the problem, and I was making myself wrong and, and beating myself up for it. And now I realized the problem was the problem. So, you know, when I started doing this process, I had been, you know, I'd be brushing my teeth, and I'm like, I'm brushing my teeth wrong. And I started catching myself in non-acceptance of myself and I would be doing the tapping, you know, even though I'm brushing my teeth wrong, you know, using the EFT phrase back then, um, I'm going to accept myself. And then, okay, no, I don't accept myself for, 
for that because I've got to do it right. Okay, well, now I'm going to set myself for that. And, um, you know, I, once I had that kind of blowout where it, I had the beautiful warmth and the, the, the incredible realisation and insight, um, it never went back to what it was before. I've certainly had challenges since then. I mean, self-acceptance is an ongoing journey. Um, you know, I've had lots of things that have brought up other aspects of myself that I've had problems with, but I've never gone back to not seeing that really the problem is the problem. I am not really the problem. And even now when I get into that, um, uh, you know, that, that process, because it's so universal for us to have learned to be down on ourselves, um, it comes back. It comes back as a reminder and something that's there and something that I, that I now kind of know. All right, so let me just add to this. This is tapping, and I certainly encourage you to do your own 30-day self-acceptance process on anything that you're down on yourself for. In fact, let's, let's stop talking for a moment and just ask, what are the things that you get down on yourself for? Come on, let's list them. Uh, and, and we can start right now, okay? What are the things that you, uh, you know, I know you've, you've talked before about, okay, these, these big, more global things, but what are, what are the specific behaviours? What are the things like, you know, for me, you know, I wasn't brushing my teeth because you're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, you know, and you're supposed to brush every one and all this kind of stuff and you're supposed to use this right motion. It's, how ridiculous. Anyway, so um, exercise. Oh, man, that would have to be the one. Like the universal uh, uh, New Year's Eve resolution. I'm going to get, this year I'm going to get fit. And so, yeah, I'm not exercising enough. Um, Janet, write a message for getting what I need to do. Trish, great ideas but don't carry through. Melissa, eating foods that are bad for me. Elaine, eating too much sugar. So right now, just want you to apply the tapping even as you're bringing that up because that was tuning into some of those. Oh, Megan says all of the above. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of these that are very universal. Christopher, as, as you speak up, um, you you type being scared to speak up. Uh, of course, this this doesn't count, does it? Um, in fact, you speaking up about that is speaking up on behalf of a lot of a lot of other people that are scared to speak up. Um, uh, Renee, caring too much what other people think of me. And then for each of these, there will be lots of aspects that you can then go away and apply tapping to, like where that comes up, what are the situations where that occurs, and so on. Um, yeah, let's just get a couple more. I'm just curious the, the types of things that people on the line are, are having. I see tells me that people are typing, but it takes a while for it to come through sometimes. Um, oh, Fozzie, you're not disciplined enough in any aspect of, of my life. Wow, that's, that's really, really big. Okay. Um, so I'm curious here, um, when, we, when we apply this with tapping, Apart from the fact that you can do this 30-day self-acceptance trial like I've, I've mentioned here, one of the ways that you can work on this stuff with tapping is you can, you can start to ask yourself, where did I learn this? Because what you're pointing to are really um, negative beliefs. Um, you know, so the, the, you know, I've, I made this slide before and I've really just asked you the prompt question, which is, you know, I can't accept myself because, and you're listing stuff like, so, you know, Christopher says, because I'm scared to speak up and Fozzie is saying, not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. And Trish says, um, my issue wasn't important enough um, and I react too much to others. Okay, so you get a list of these things that are wrong with you and then, um, Ultimately, these are, um, they may be beliefs themselves, but they may also point to beliefs that you can do some tapping on. So, for example, I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. Okay, that is a belief, but it also points to a belief about discipline. And I'm also curious, uh, the top level of beliefs that you can work on are what's called identity beliefs. So identity beliefs are beliefs like I am this or I am not that. So your, um, your example, Fosia, points to an identity belief that you see yourself as someone who is. Maybe you would say I am undisciplined or I am whatever. So some of these examples are more specific beliefs. Others are more global or more 
big time beliefs and the biggest of big time beliefs are identity beliefs. And so for example, Anne, your example, I react too much to others. I would say to you then, okay, what kind of person do you see yourself as? What kind of person is someone who reacts too much to others? And that will identify the identity belief. You know, maybe it's, you know, even if it's just I'm too reactive or I'm too sensitive or whatever, it's probably going to be something like that. And then you can apply tapping to those beliefs. And one of the ways of applying tapping to, to negative beliefs is simply just tapping and focusing on the belief and then following that using the acceptance process into noticing you know, what the feelings are of that belief and then following those and sometimes things will come up spontaneously. What you can do specifically is you can also go to treating the past events behind those beliefs. So you can ask yourself, where did I learn this? Who taught me this? Where did I first learn this? Um, and if you have a feeling instead of a belief, you can say, where have I felt this before? Or if the feeling is very prominent, while you are feeling the feeling and tapping, you can ask, where have I felt this feeling before? And then you can go back and discover some past events. So um, if I go back to Fosia's example, um, says not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life, all of those aspects or parts of your life where you are supposed to be disciplined is what you're using as a way of beating yourself up. The belief, the identity belief may be, I'm not disciplined enough. All right, well then, where did you learn that you're not disciplined enough? Where did you learn that discipline is important? Who taught you this? And, and particularly, where did you first learn this? And if you can identify some of those past events and then go back to those events and apply tapping. And the simple process for that, and a lot of people on the line will know this, but it doesn't mean that you've done this. So um, if you have the opportunity after this to spend a little bit of time then go back and do the tell a story or run the movie process on those uh, where you learned about discipline or where you learned that people should be disciplined. And uh, for each particular event that you have, first of all, tap on any body tension that you have and fear of the fear or anything that stops you from being able to go there. And then if you're a visualizer, if you think in pictures and images, make that into a small movie um, and then run the movie and freeze frame it at any particular point that's really intense and apply tapping to that until things come down. If you do this for each of the events that's holding up the table of your, the tabletop of your belief, to use a, a metaphor which originally came from Robert Cialdini, um, the, the past events provide the leg to the negative belief about you or, or they provide the legs for the negative belief about you being not disciplined enough or undisciplined in all parts of your life, if you release the emotional attachments to those, then the legs will um, let go and the tabletop comes down and the belief is no longer supported. Now, not everybody thinks in pictures, so you can simply tell a story or run through the story or, or get a sense of what happened at each point and then do the tapping on the negative emotions and the things that you experienced. And don't try and force it or be courageous. Just do this in an acceptance tapping way where you're just adding tapping and you're accepting what comes next and you're just following with that. And sometimes the tapping helps us to bear with feelings as they move us and move through us. And as things start to move, then we start to th see things differently and we have different perspectives because sometimes we're holding on to a perspective which was given to us by someone else in our life and now we are treating that as real but it isn't any lo any longer necessary. It's not the kind of person that we are now. It's just something that happened to us back then that we had to adapt to. So here's my suggestion is that you um, generate a list of past events related to your negative beliefs about yourself and that you work through one or more of them as you go away using that uh, that basic simple process and uh, applying the acceptance tapping to it. And if you just get a bit of tapping into that system, it's amazing what you can free up in terms of life energy. Now, I'd love to spend a bit more time on this and use some specific examples, but I, I want to talk about this intention-based energy process that I've been using since Christmas, since I really discovered this um, over the Christmas holiday back here in Australia. Um, I had a heel spur um, 
very painful, stopped me from being able to get out and move and run and walk and do what I wanted to do. Uh, and I was pretty much confined to the, to the lounge watching the cricket, which was good fun. Um, but in between times, I had lots of time and I couldn't move very far. So I started doing some tapping on my problems and my frustrations and my frustrations with not being able to move. I also was using a, an intention-based approach. You know, I'm not sure Willem Lammers would call it intention-based. He would say that the power of words um, to direct energy uh, and to, to transform and change what's called logosynthesis. And uh, this is a wonderful process. You can look up online and find some free material and start to get into. Uh, and it's about retrieving energy and releasing energy that's not yours and so on using words. So I was using that, I was using tapping. I was going through a, a process, Robert Middleton, who's a, he's a marketing guy, and you can look up his unstuck process. He has a great process for getting stuck on your marketing. So I wanted to get unstuck on some aspects of my marketing with my business. So I was using his process, and his process is based on Byron Katie's process, the work where she, she has you look at things that are upsetting you and ask, deep down if it's true. And that simple process helps you to, to realize that everything that's upsetting you is what's untrue. And what is what is true can't upset you at all. And, um, you know, so I was using these processes and they were all working for me and they were all freeing stuff up. And I realized that I needed to not just tap on my problems, I also needed to, to start working on what were my goals and what were my intentions and, and how did I want to move and how did I want to move forward. Anyway, I, I, I was doing all this process, starting to move and I started to feel a bit better and I was rereading Byron Katie's book, Loving What Is, and there's a, a line in that book which really jumped out at me, at me and it's the line that a thought is harmless unless we believe it. It's not our thoughts, but the attachments to our thoughts that causes us to suffer. And then I was, because I was starting to think about what my intentions were, I started thinking about this and I thought, well, hang on, okay. It's not the thought that's the problem, it's our emotional attachment to the thought. So for example, um, the thought of I'm not disciplined enough, if I throw that out there, some of you will go, Aah! And others will go, nah, that doesn't fit, that's not me. So some of you have emotional attachment to that in, this, in the sense, and some of you have a lot of emotional attachments which constitutes a belief. And the tapping, we use the tapping, when it works, it's releasing the emotional attachment. And the work by Byron Katie also releases emotional attachment through this inquiry process, you know, asking, is it true, and going deep inside to find out the answer. And... Um, it occurred to me, well, what if we could just use intention? What, what, what if we could just use our own intention to release the emotional attachment that we have? And I knew that there were a number of approaches that use this process uh, or, or a process like intention. So um, Willem Lammers' Logo Synthesis, um, there's Ask and Receive, um, by, um, Sandy Radomsky, Thomas L. Taffer, use ask and receive process. Um, Willem, uh, excuse me, Dr. Larry Nims has be set free fast, um, where initially you'd use this intention process, but now he's got that, you know, you've got to give an instruction to your subconscious mind, and now you link that to a Q word, and every time you think the Q word, that gives the instruction to release the, you know, the fear, anger, sadness, and traumas, and so on. Um, so I thought, well, you know, these can't be the only process where, processes where you can use intention. What if I could simply say, I release all my emotional attachments to this problem? And so I thought of a problem and I tuned into it and I focused on it and I, and I accessed the, the problem thinking and the feelings. And then I just simply said, statement. I release all my emotional attachments to this. I can't remember the specifics of what it was, but I release all my emotional attachments to this. And I went, ah. And I thought, well, okay, there's a little bit more. Okay, well, I release all my emotional attachments to that. Huh. And I thought, well, okay, what about this part of it, you know? 
and I found all the aspects. And each aspect, I was I was also doing tapping, but I was saying this, and this was allowing me to move through aspects really quickly. And then I noticed that okay, I've got a disturbance in my you know bottom part of my chest here. And I thought, okay, well, what if I just use my intention to just restore the energy flow to that area? So I said, I restore the right energy flow to the bottom of my chest. And I went, ah. I thought, well, that's interesting. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm like, right, okay. This, when I get a result, I start getting really curious, can I get a result here, can I get a result there, and so I started applying to all the things that were frustrating and annoying me and upsetting me and worrying me and that I was down on myself for and all this kind of stuff, and it was incredible, like, it was like, and, and I, just like when I first learned tapping, I was like, this can't work, this shouldn't work, this is ridiculous, so I started, you know, really testing on things, now what I did notice is, is some things First of all, it's the first statement that does most of the work. And what I found was that if I rushed to the second statement too soon and I still had aspects and things that were really triggering me, then the energy flow wouldn't really return. I'd still, uh, you know, or things wouldn't return to flow. I'd still have that constriction or that tension or whatever it was <clears throat> in that area. I needed to find, okay, what is, what's triggering this? What is the thought that I'm attached to? that's triggering this. And sometimes I started with something and that wasn't really the thing that was triggering me. So for example, um, you know, let's say for example, you know, uh, Fozio, I hope I'm saying your name right. If you say, okay, I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life and you apply this process, you say, okay, I release all my emotional attachments to, and then you just, just state exactly whatever it is. Two, I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. If you want, you can say, I release all my emotional attachments to this belief that I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. But I prefer to go straight for it as you think it in your head without calling it a belief or, or whatever. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> That's reassuring. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get it wrong. Um, anyway, so... Um, you might start on that and say, okay, I, re I release all my emotional attachment. And you can, you can combine this with tapping. So you've got bro both things are getting in there and they're both helping with releasing and restoring, uh, you know, releasing attachments and restoring energy flow. That's what I think that we're, we're ultimately after here. And when the energy flow is restored, you end up in a place of clarity and you also end up in a, in a place of perspective where you see things in a much wider perspective and you're not stuck in the narrow, constricted thing. Um, the constriction, for example, of like, I'm not disciplined enough in any area of my life. When that starts to release, you start to be able to petition it out and to say, okay, well, yeah, I'm, you know, there's several areas where I'm not that, you know, I'm not disciplined. There's some areas where I am disciplined and there's some areas where I'm in between. And then, um, Seeing that without the judgment, without the emotional attachment, without the constriction and all of those things is a great place to be. So going back to uh, what I was saying before, you might start doing it on the global thing, you know, and you might say, okay, my problem is I'm not, or my belief is I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. Okay, I release all my emotional attachments to I'm not disciplined enough in any aspect of my life. And... Okay, well, it still feels constricted, so let's focus on some some areas where that's really the case, or the ones that upset me the most. All right, well, you know, the common one that a lot of people bring up is exercise. Okay, I'm not exercising enough. Okay, so now you say, I release all my emotional attachments to, I'm not exercising enough. And then you notice what comes next, and you progressively can use this to work through aspects, and... Uh, you know, now you might say, okay, where's the feeling? And let's see if I can just restore the energy flow to that area, just using your intention to restore the energy flow. Now, for those of you who've been working with me on the Go For It program, you'll know I've, I've created a four-step process for using this, uh, these intentions f uh, for your goals and intentions. So you set your intention to do something. The minute you set your intention to do something, your blocks are going to come up. Um, and your negative beliefs are going to be revealed 
and then you progressively release your emotional attachments to those um, problems, events, images, beliefs, and thoughts that are that are being provoked. You restore the energy flow to all the areas that are um, constricted and constrained, and then you get to a position of clarity where you can reset your intention. And if you're ready, you can go for it. Or if you're not, um, now you can identify other aspects to work with. I know I've gone through this really quickly, but I can't even believe we've got about five minutes left in this process. Um, ultimately, you know, these intentions can be used to release your emotional attachments to past traumas and hurts as well. So the process I mentioned previously, just using tapping to go back on uh, beliefs and past events where you learned that, you can go back and use this same process with that, releasing attachments to what happened then, to the reactions that you had and the thoughts that you had for those events that happened and the feelings that that caused you. And you can use it on things that you project, you know, um, such as future fantasies, fantasies and so on. I'm going to go through an example of my own um, in a moment and you'll hopefully see this. The result of doing this is that you have a lot more energy and you have the availability to be present where you are in your life to move forward rather than being caught up in thought forms and so on. So um, here's an example of, uh, of IEP. I was uh, uh, preparing for this webinar. I have enough stuff to do 100 hours. So I was throwing things in, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this. And so I'm going through it last night before coming into this webinar this morning. I think, and the thought I had was, it's a mess. And so I thought, right, OK, let's do this. So I start tapping. And I do the intention process. I release all my emotional attachments to it's a mess. And instantly, I had a more peaceful feeling. But one of the things I've learned with using this process is to let it land and let it process and then notice what comes next. So now I notice I had a little bit of tension in the back of my head. So I thought, right, OK, let's see if we can restore that energy flow to that area. So I, so I use the intention. I restore the right energy flow to the back of my head. And then I noticed that there was some tension further down in my neck. It kind of had moved. So I, I used the next, uh, the, the same statement and applied it to that area. Uh, so I said, I restore the right energy flow to my neck. And then I had the thought, OK, I need to reduce this stuff down and just give them the key things. Uh, you know, there's, there's too much information. I just need to give them the key stuff. And then. The next thought that came up was a belief. I'm not good at organizing. So I apply the intention process to that negative belief, that judgment, which we're doing this process for, the whole thing about self-acceptance. You see how now I started with a process of it's a mess, and now I've revealed an underlying judgment and negative self-belief. So now I've got the belief I'm not good at organizing, so I apply the intention process and the tapping to that. I release all my emotional attachments to not being good at organizing, was how I was how I said it. Because I was typing it on the computer at the time. I thought, I'll work through an example of my own. And then I had this sigh, I had this deep breath, and I felt my chest opening up. And the thought that came to me was, I just need to do it. It's something I haven't practiced, and I know I've had a lot of resistance to organizing in the past. And so I started to feel a lot more freedom. I started to feel like, you know, I, I, I can organize things. It's just that I haven't, you know, hey, you know, as long as you have the belief I'm not good at organizing, you don't allow yourself to start. So I was like, oh, I can start. I don't have to be good at it. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I started remembering some times when I was successful at organizing. So the global thing of I'm not good at organizing, that's actually not true. And when you release some of the emotional attachments to that, in various ways, by using the tapping, by using the intention process, if you need to, by going back to those past events where you learned that and releasing attachment to those, then you'll be freed up to see that there are times when you are organised and have been organised. So then I went and did a scan through of my body and my mind to see where things were at. And then I had the, this doubt. And this is where the, um, the judgment and the aspect of others comes in. They, you, 
are going to think that what I did is a pathetic effort. <laughs> that was my thought. <laughs> so then I did the intention process on that. I released all my emotional attachments to this fantasy that I had created in my mind of you rejecting my pathetic attempts at organising the webinar. And then I actually literally smiled and the thought came, it's all okay. Some will, some won't. You know, that's their stuff. Some of them are going to think, oh, that's, that's, you know, it doesn't meet my style. Some people are more visual, some are more auditory, whatever. They have different preferences. Some are more kinesthetic, body-oriented. Um, and the thought came up, you know, success, not perfection. Live your own philosophy. Do what you, um, you know, what you tell others to do, essentially. And so there's a lot of freedom in this process. And that really, that entire process maybe took like 10 minutes. And prior to doing that, I really was in a mess. I was in a funk because I was trying to think my way out of it and uh, thinking was bringing all this stress and so on. And there was just no way that I could give you everything that I wanted to give you on self-acceptance in the time that we have. I just had to focus on the things that I could do. And I hope that um, you'll agree that, that some of it has been helpful and useful for you. Now we are going to run out of time and uh, here's what I'm going to recommend to you. I'm going to recommend that you do your own 30-day self-acceptance trial to help you if you, um, thank you Anne, appreciate. Um, if you want you can go to our website and under personal development you'll find the original series I wrote on this when I was writing for Gary Craig's newsletter. Um, and uh, you can follow that process. Uh, for the next 30 days, tap on whatever you don't accept yourself for. Catch yourself not accepting yourself and add the tapping to it. And then just you can just accept that and follow with that. Um, or if you want to focus, you can focus on the fact that you're going to accept yourself despite the fact that you're doing this. Even if you're doing this, you're going to still accept yourself. And then even though you don't accept for yourself for doing this, you're going to accept yourself for it anyway, even though that is unacceptable. And uh, I'm sure you'll find it interesting if you, you just keep uh, uh, accepting anything, even the next um, lack of acceptance. Um, I want to, as I mentioned, refer to a program that I have. Some of you know I have a program online already you can purchase um, that is the 30-day self-acceptance program. Um, it already includes the first three parts of this, which is a bunch of teleclasses I ran before with people, the recordings of that. People paid $99 just to do the teleclasses. Those recordings are included. Um, there are 30 days of tips and inspiration and strategies, um, and the value of that is way more than $99 on its own. There's a four-part audio series I did with Jessica Ortner on finding the gifts in your shadow, and all of that is included in the regular self-acceptance program. And what I've decided to do now is to do a coaching program as well. So I'm adding four 90-minute live webinar group coaching sessions where I'm going to work with you using tapping and this intention process to help you to use it on your stuff. And this is coaching in the group where everybody's tapping along and people are doing their own intentions. We're all going to be supporting each other um, for six hours of working together. And um, that itself, you know, I reckon it's worth a lot more than $149. The total value of all that is a 384 plus, 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 plus. Um, and I'm offering the whole lot for $149. It's only 40 places. Um, there are 100 people in this webinar we sold out. There's 100 people this afternoon in that webinar. Um, I'm sending it to you 200 before anybody else. Now, it, it won't be um, 40 places taken by this one. I'm actually, if I have to, um, if I get more than 20 from each group, then I'm just, I'm going to have to, make sure that the other group don't miss out because their program's not till later. Um, by the way, if you already have purchased the self-acceptance program for me, um, you've already paid $99 for that. I'm sure you've gained great benefits from that. I know people have written to me, and you'll see the um, online people have said they've had fantastic results. It's so great to help people to gain that freedom. Um, you can buy the for $49, you can join these live webinar group coaching sessions. So online, on the offer page, which I have created for you. No one else is getting this um, for at least the next 24 hours. I won't be sending this out to anyone else until tomorrow. So if those 40 places are taken by everyone on this call and this afternoon's call, 
that's it. You you guys are the ones that have invested the time. You've got up in the middle of the night, or you've um, you've joined me at whatever time of day it is for you live. And I want to recognise that and acknowledge that. And I really appreciate that you have uh, been willing to spend this time with me. If you would have um, go to that page, I've given the details of the regular self acceptance thirty day program, um, and these four coaching sessions and the dates of those starts in about three weeks time and we'll go once a week for four weeks um, and so it's eftdownunder.com forward slash SA coach SA for the Americans that's an A not an I uh, SA coach um, and I think you might be taken to that page at the end of this or you'll be thereabouts um, if you want to get that link, you won't be able to get it anywhere other than coming back to see it on this webinar, at least for the next 24 hours or so. I want to say thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that you found the stuff that we've done, the tips and techniques that I have um, gone through helpful on your self-acceptance journey. Love to um, hear your feedback. Feel free to write to us. Um, admin at eftdownunder.com. Admin at eftdownunder.com. Um, with feedback or questions or things that you um, that you want to say about this, really appreciate hearing from, hearing from people, and um, yeah, keep in touch and see you around.